brain 10,000 times faster than words. So they already in the brain, but you just don't realize it. So you think, oh my God, I must be thinner. They're very clever visuals because they get to your brain first. That's why advertisers love them. You need to be aware of the intention. It's a billion dollar industry to make you so crap. And actually this is the most clever thing because it's the most unattainable thing to be thin at all times. So the more something is unattainable, the more profitable it will be. The generation of our kids is need to look at even more visuals, training them that how to look at images, how visuals are affecting them, and therefore to put distance from them. That is not truthful at all times, especially in the rise of deepfake, for instance, it's not at all times something that they should digest. Do you think AI is destroying creatives and creativity. Hello, my fellow leaders. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Borostovsky. In a shocking turn of events, we've hit 100,000 downloads. I'm starting to think that you all actually like us. But seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. As I'm in the lab preparing season seven, get ready for a trip down memory lane. For the next few weeks, we're running the highlights of some of my favorite episodes. So hit that subscribe or follow button, whatever platform you're tuning in from. Your support means absolutely everything. And we literally couldn't be here without you. What kind of imagery is good for our health and what kind of imagery is not? The snacking industry is worth 700 billions. And it's actually on a 5% increase year on year. And I feel for me, visual junk is kind of a similar. So for me, it's more about the awareness that you're interacting with those visuals and those visuals affect you more than trying to classify good and bad. There are visuals in repetition that will make you feel very insecure, more to consume probably something that's not very great for you and probably shape you in a way that's not ideal, right? Do you realize that in just a single day, you look at a thousand visuals? Do you even realize that? And actually you are in discussion with them in the same way that if suddenly someone on the streets was coming up to you and shouting at you, you think, oh gosh, I have to tell that story. Someone just randomly walked to me and shouted at me. But actually visuals do this all the time. You have those visuals that aggress you and would, you know, would impact your brain emotionally. They would trigger you, but you're not aware of that. You probably just bypass it without thinking that was a trigger. Whereas actually when it's a word, and someone shout that word at you, you are aware of that trigger. So for me, the key thing is awareness, making sure you are knowledgeable mm. about what you are typically looking at and consuming. It's not just social media that would make you feel insecure. It's, and everyone always puts a conversation on social media, but actually no, it's advertising on the billboards, it's magazines, it's social media. I mean, magazines have been making us feel crap as women for mm -hmm. like, you know, decades. They haven't waited for social media and that bikini picture of that woman to make us feel crap. And I think it's a bit too easy to say we're addicted to technology. Of course, there's separate issues of technology, but actually there's a visual content we're constantly being bombarded with for so many decades that comes out of the advertising sector, the political sector that is feeding us. Mm -hmm. It's for us to be thinking, hold on, I feel crap about my body or I feel crap about wanting to be someone or consume something because maybe I've seen hundreds of visuals for the past three days that reinforce this. And that enables you to put distance with that thought because otherwise, you know, the visuals gets to your brain 10,000 times faster than words. So they already in your brain, but you just don't realize it. So you think, oh my God, I must be thinner. But actually, how helpful would it be that you think, hold on, I'm being told to be thinner more than I must be thinner. And that's again, the they're very clever visuals because they get to your brain fast. You don't comprehend they got to your brain. You have very little awareness. You've actually consumed all that content and then you go and act. And of course, that's why advertisers love them because they, got, they get to you really quickly, but you're not even aware this is through them that actually you're starting feeding off those desires, those wishes and those insecurities. So the key thing is really awareness, um, more than good and bad. And after this, it is up to you um, to make decisions but I want you to be knowledgeable and aware. Mm. It's a billion dollar industry to make you feel crap. This is the most clever thing because it's the most unattainable thing to be thin at all times because it's almost impossible through changes of the body, through the aging, through pregnancies. So this means that you can constantly like, consume products because it's unattainable. So the more something is unattainable, the more profitable it will be. And I think, of course, that image is feeding like, a, you know, so much of a large industry, up to fashion, to gym classes, to 
Amazon sending you mats and and ways to kind of restrict the the uh, the belly and all the, all those things are being fed out of images like this. Once you know this, again, you can take part in it. I enjoy being sportive and I enjoy feeling confident in my body. You can take a decision on how you want to be, but just be aware of why images are being put out there. The generation of our kids is going to look at even more visuals, but training them that how to look at images, how visuals are affecting them, and therefore to put distance with them. That is not truthful at all times. It's not, uh, especially in the rise of deepfake, for instance, it's not at all times something that they should digest, that they can, they're allowed to put distance in the same way that the emotions of other people, they're allowed to put distance with them. It's in that distance that you'll be able to be healthy with it because you want to evolve in your world and you want to be filled with experiences. I adore visuals. I want to be filled with experiences of different visuals, but I think it's treating them as what they are, which is a visual that is not yours. And I think to put distance, to ultimately create your own visual environment separately, right? Mm-hmm. So, and that this is the same where if someone shouts at you, it's more to do with them, it's to do with you. So the distance is again, very important to comprehend that while it's affecting you, it's not everything. Mm-hmm. The fact that hobbies are dying, I think, is problematic. You should have hobbies that are beyond your job. Like, I have random hobbies from cycling to baking to, like, you know, I'm a very, I love dressing up a table and all this Vegas that are not related to my job. And I feel that's a space for imagination, a space for creativity. And I think the happiest moments that I have while watching my kids is when they have that imagination space, you know, when they speak to themselves and they come up with those stories and they are so occupied in it, so busy in their own imagination. And the muscle imagination speaks about the need of it. We have all those tools that are trying to take away this precious moments for our imagination, our creativity. And that's obviously all those apps that are trying to battle for our attention. It's literally our, our attention is worth billion by now. But I think that attention in making sure that we leave it also to imagination and creativity and however we do it whether it's baking or walking that we get that bits of imagination but that is so key because that reflection is enabling us first of all to feel happy in mental health space to be much better but also to be so much more creative so it's um if i less is busy imagining something i would never stop it even if there's a even if it technically should be eating at that point i would always move slightly and be flexible because i think that space is so precious in a time where Every single technological tool is going to battle for his time and his eyes will. I want him to just, I want him to have that space. So I just would never impose a routine if he's in that space. It's That's going to be a big battle again for our, that generation of kids where everything is done to grab their attention. But the doing nothing, being bored, coming up with ideas is so essential to us being creative beings and being happy as, on the back of that that I want to protect it as much as I can. Do you think AI is destroying creatives and creativity? So I have tons of artists who use AI and I actually have a very special story by our artist Ellie Pritz, who sadly has a health condition that means she cannot paint anymore. So she used AI to further her vision. The way she's kind of directing the vision is very artistic. So I'm not I'm never scared on how creatives can take on new tools because they are always a way able to expand the creativity of it. You need a toolkit to know those images are fake. But I have no issue with fiction. I'm comfortable being in and out of the fiction and non-fiction world. I'm just not comfortable in having blurred limits that are not defined when no one is informed this will be the case. Deepfakes were invented by the porn sector. And there's a reason for that is that you could invent sexuality for someone that you could just... You could destroy so many lives in the process of it. You can have people inventing a reality against you. Deepfake is a furthering of this. And the fact that the porn sector was a creator of it is not reassuring because the, it shows how it could be used against people uh, to create things that have never existed. Sex and scandals go hand in hand. People love a sex scandal. So actually the porn industry is very innovative as a sector, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> We are made to judge and believe constantly because that's our way to survive. We adapt to the world's true belief system. What you said is true on, we need to be aware of the intention. So when you are reading a paper that is right-wing and is talking about immigration, you know that their views on immigration is gonna be X way. And that's fine because again, if you're right-wing, you can embrace that. But if you're not, then at least you know the viewpoint on that problem. 
is a way, right? The problem is we haven't been taught to do the same with visuals. And going back to intention, there's nothing wrong with having intentions. We will, as as belief um, people, we would always try to push beliefs to send them to other people. We mm-hmm. think our belief, our way to push off is obviously the best, right? And you see it, I'm sure, with motherhood nonstop, where everyone thinks that the best parents ever, right? And this is a way to do things. So that you can't change, but you can change that you can't put in the intention of what's being, what's being pushed as a visual. If you like watching inspiring stories of leaders from all walks of life and would like to support our show, the best thing you can do is to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.